Hello everybody, my name is Joel Haas and I'm going to be talking about approximating isosurfaces by guaranteed quality triangular meshes. This is joint work with my colleague at University of California Davis, Maria Trinkova. So let me introduce the basic idea. What we're, introduce, what we're interested in doing is finding high quality meshes that approximate a given two-dimensional surface in three space. So by mesh we mean a two-dimensional surface made from flat triangles. And what we'd like is to have these triangles get a nice approximation of the surface and have angles as close to 60 degrees as possible. What we'd like to avoid are sliver triangles. These triangles with small air, small tri very small angles, one or two very small angles, such as the kind that you see at the right. Slivers cause a lot of problem in applications, such as in finite element methods or computer graphics, so we'd like to avoid them. Now we're going to be talking about a new algorithm to produce such meshes called the Grad Normal algorithm. And in order to apply it, we'll have to be given some surface, which is going to be meshed. And the surface can come in various forms, but Let's first talk about when the surface is given by a mathematical formula, f of x, y, z equals 0. The surface is given by the level set 0 of this function. And once we decide how to find the mesh that we desire is, the grad normal algorithm will, al algorithm will output a mesh approximating the surface f. If we put in the function x squared plus y squared plus z squared minus 4, then the output will be a high quality mesh approximating the sphere of radius 2, like the one shown at right, which was in fact produced by this algorithm. And the theorem I'll try and show you the proof of is that when f is a smooth surface, then it is sufficiently fine resolution, all the meshes, all the triangles in this grad normal mesh will have angles between 35.2 and 101.5 degrees. Now sometimes surfaces don't come as mathematical functions. For example, a surface may be gotten from a laser scanner or a CAT scan. And in that case, we uh, take some other form of input of the surface. So here we have an example where we start with the Stanford bunny, which is itself a mesh uh, produced by the Stanford uh, Graphics Laboratory. And this uh, has quite good mesh properties, but some of the triangles in the in the uh, Stanford bunny have angles as low as 0 0.5 degrees. And when we run it through the grad normal algorithm, the new triangles will all have angles larger than 10.4 degrees. And to illustrate this, look at the area at the base of the left ear of the rabbit. And if you uh, hone in on this a little bit, you'll see that uh, the angles are quite bad near this region in the bunny. There are some triangles that really are slivers, but when the grad normal mesh produced by the grad normal algorithm is, uh, is uh, examined, you'll see that its angles are more uniformly away from zero, closer to 60 degrees. One point to keep in mind when we uh, construct these mesh approximations of surfaces is that we want not only the triangles to be close to the surface, but also the normals of the triangles should limit to the normals of the surface that they're approximating as we make the resolution finer. So an example to keep in mind is that it's possible to approximate a surface in C0 just for letting the distance appro approach go to zero as you decrease the resolution by a surface isotopic to the surface, a surface that can be deformed to the surface F continuously consisting entirely of equilateral triangles. This is done by taking a cub cubical mesh approximating uh, the surface F and then stacking these uh, equilateral triangle pyramids on top of the faces of this mesh. So you can get exact equilateral triangles approximating F, but they won't have normal vectors that approximate the normal vectors of F. So that's another property we're going to want. So let's practice uh, understanding the uh, grad normal algorithm by looking at what it does in dimension two. So there uh, I'm going to compare it to a well-known algorithm called marching tetrahedra that it has some resemblance to, and I'll point out how it differs from marching tetrahedra. So marching tetrahedra in dimension two 
we look at the, a tiling of the plane by triangles, and now we consider a curve, a blue curve F rather than a surface, and we'll construct the mesh approximating this blue curve, and the mesh beta is constructed by taking the points where the curve intersects triangular edges and replacing the curve with straight line segments connecting those points. Now I'm simplifying a little bit because the curve may intersect an edge more than once and so on, but that turns out not to be a, a material uh, issue, so I'll, I won't uh, deal with it in, in this talk. Now the grad normal algorithm is going to construct an approximating mesh to the curve F in three steps. In the first step, rather than constructing a polygon that has the vertices lying on F, we'll construct a polygon lying on midpoints of triangles and separating vertices of edges in the same way that F does. So we call this the mid-normal mesh because its vertices are located in the mid midpoints of the edges that they lie on. As a second step, we'll now move these vertices to F, but not by sliding them along the edges, as, which would give the, uh, the marching tetrahedra polygon. Instead, we'll project to the closest point on F. We'll use a closest point projection. And we'll call this new mesh the grad normal mesh. When everything is smooth, it can be, you can use the gradient to do this projection. So the grad normal mesh will have vertices lying on the curve F, but not on the edges of the triangulation. So here side by side are the marching tetrahedra and the grad normal meshes in dimension two. And then in dimension three, there's going to be an extra step, which I'll leave to uh, discuss very shortly when we move this up to discussion in dimension three. So let's do that now. We're going to do the analogous process. We're going to tile space not with triangles, but with tetrahedra. And we're going to, at step one, construct this mid-normal mesh. We're going to look at how the surface separates the vertices of the tetrahedra and construct triangles that do the same have the same separation property. If the surface separates one vertex of a tetrahedron from the other three, then we'll have a single triangle as it left. If it separates two vertices of a tetrahedra from the other two, then we'll construct two triangles, which together form this quadrilateral, and the quadrilateral is divided by a diagonal to form two triangles, and all the vertices in both cases are located at midpoints of edges. And the kind of triangles that you, uh, that you produce in this way fit together to form surfaces like the one shown at, at the right. These are mid-normal meshes of genus 2 and of genus 0. So to produce this, we have a choice of what tetrahedral tiling should we use. And what we did was we explored various families of tetrahedral tilings of three space. There's still not a complete classification of these known, but uh, the most interesting family to explore was the one that was discovered by Goldberg in 1974, one of which is shown at right there, and that's the one we used. Uh, there's a infinite family of such triangulations, and we discovered that the one that works best for the angle uh, computations that we're performing is the one that coincided with a tetrahedron discovered by Somerville in 1923, whose vertices are located at the body-centered cubic lattice. There's other possible triangulations by tetrahedra of three space, but we've shown that no tetrahedral shape, even if the tiles have different uh, non-isometric shapes, no tetrahedral shape can significantly improve the angles achieved by our method. So once we fix the type of tetrahedron shape we're going to use, this Somerville tetrahedron, now our procedure is to take this min-normal mesh, and here we again see how to construct it. You start with the blue surface F, and you form the triangles that intersect the tetrahedron at midpoints of edges and separate the vertices in the same way as F does. When you have a union of such triangles, they fit together along their common boundaries and form at the right what you see is a, a mid-normal surface that actually intersects six different tetrahedra and has eight triangles in it.
again, we see these kinds of surfaces, these rather knobbly, non-smooth surfaces. The approach, they are approaching the surfaces that they approximate, but not having their tangent spaces appro approach the tangent spaces of the limiting surfaces. So the second step is to project, project each mid-normal mesh vertex to its closest point on the surface F. And here at right, you see the red mid-normal triangle is projected to the green grad-normal mesh by closest point projection of the three vertices. There's another picture of that. And one thing you can notice is that sometimes this mid-normal vertex, which lies on a, the mid, midpoint of an edge, is projected outside the tetrahedron onto the grad-normal triangle. And now the third step, which we will explain now. It turns out that the angles on this grad-normal projection are not always good, but if you study what goes wrong when, they, when you can have small triangles, small angle triangles, the only bad cases occur when you have a valence 4 vertex. And if you do the process of removing all triangles that have a valence 4 vertex and taking the resulting quadrilateral and triangulated, triangulating it again by adding a diagonal, then you can bound all the angles that now result away from zero. In fact, you can establish the following theorem. When you have a smooth angle, a smooth surface, and a sufficiently fine resolution, then the grand normal mesh has all angles in the interval between 35.2 and 101.5 degrees. And we can compare this to previously known results. There are many other results on this problem, but some representative ones. Uh, Paul Chu had an algorithm in 1993 that gives LNA uh, triangles w with point insertions and winds up with angles between 30 degrees and 120 degrees. Uh, I believe this is the best angle bound previously obtained. Lebel and Shuchuk have an isosurface stuffing algorithm which also triangulates the interior of the surface with high quality tetrahedra having good dihedral angles and the bounds that it establishes on the boundary are between 16 degrees and 145 degrees. This has running time comparable to the grad normal algorithm, quite, quite fast, but the angles aren't quite as good. And the theoretical limit was established by Derverdier and Marin. Gaspinet says you can do no better in general than about 51.6 to 72 degrees, and Derverdier and Marin gave a construction it's theoretical based on the uniformization theorem. It's not algorithmic at the moment. That shows that you can actually approach these angles by some mesh on the surface, although the process of constructing it is not currently implemented in any algorithm. Here we did a table where we looked at various size tetrahedral tilings of space and what kind of uh, what kind of angle bounds they give for the resulting meshes. Well, the takeaway from this is that as the scale gets finer, you do indeed approach the predicted limiting angle bounds. But in fact, the grad normal algorithm actually gives good angle bounds at reasonable scales. It's not just the theoretical construction. Even with a relatively small number of tetrahedra tiling space, the angle bounds are bounded nicely away from the kind of angles you'd see in sliver triangles. When we input a mesh surface and apply the grad normal algorithm to it, we can't get the theoretical bounds that we have in the, in the smooth case. But in practice, we still get very good angle distribution. So here we see angle distributions for the original Stanford bunny in yellow and for the grad normal algorithm applied to the bunny at two different resolutions. And you see you get very similar distributions even though the resolutions are quite different. And uh, the lesson here is that the grad normal algorithm is more clustered around, more centered around 60 degrees and gives very few triangles with angles below 30 or above 100 degrees. So let me talk in the last few minutes about the idea of the proof. The goal is to compute the angles of the triangles produced by the grad normal angles, by the grad normal algorithm. 
So the first step is to compute the angles in the mid-normal mesh, this intermediate mesh that we construct, before we project it onto the surface. And this is very easy. There's not that many, there's a finite number of triangles in a fixed tetrahedral shape, not too many cases, and we can compute their angles, and they all turn out to be between 45 and 90 degrees. And now when we project those triangles, that's the green triangle at the far right, when we project them onto the surface to get the grad normal uh, triangles, we have to measure how much those angles can be distorted by the projection. So here we see a brown triangle, which is part of the mid-normal mesh. We see various types of projections onto surfaces that cross that tetrahedron. Now, because we're looking at the limiting resolution, we can assume that the surface we're projecting onto is a plane. But there's still many ways that a plane can cross a tetrahedron, and each one of those can lead to a different angle distortion, so we have to organize and get a worst-case analysis for how small these angles can be and how large they can be. So what we notice first when we do this is that when you intersect the tetrahedra with parallel planes and project any of those planes, you'll get the same angle in the projection. So the projection angles are actually determined by the normal of the plane that you're projecting to, which is a point on the sphere. So if we think of this uh, triangle KML that we're projecting onto one of these planes, and fix one of the angles, perhaps the angle MKL at K, then the number of the size of the angle that it projects to is given by a function on the two sphere, which determines the the normal of the plane that we're projecting to. So what we need to do is consider all the possible planes intersecting the tetrahedra, which have the property that they separate the vertices in the same way that the triangle the mid-normal triangle KLM does. Here's a different one, and it's normal, again shown as a normal vector on the, on the unit sphere. When we have families of planes that have a common line in intersec of intersection, they give you a geodesic arc on the, on the sphere, and the extremal arcs are ones which have common intersection along an edge of the tetrahedron. The set of all planes separating A from vertices B, C, D in this tetrahedron have normals which lie inside a spherical triangle, which is shown at right, and an angle function on this spherical triangle will give us the projected angles of one of the angles in the mid-normal triangle. Now we can do some analysis to show that the worst case, the smallest and the largest triangles uh, triangle angles must occur on the boundary of this spherical triangle. And we analyze all such spherical triangles. Altogether, there are 12 different triangles, which have 36 angles, three each, and we project them to spherical regions with up to four edges each. And in total, we get 144 angle functions on spherical geodesic arcs. And when we take each of those angle functions and graph the angles that they produce will lead to the 20 graphs above after uh, eliminating symmetric cases. So these, are all the these give all the possible angles of these mid-normal triangle angles when we project them to planes that could conceivably intersect the tetrahedron appropriately. And when we uh, look at these, we see that the maximum angle is 101.5 degrees and the minimum angle is 35.2 degrees, so that gives the claim bounds in our theorem. These computations were done with Mathematica and Python and are all available at GitLab. This concludes the proof that the claimed angle bounds hold. And uh, that ends our talk. Thank you for watching, and uh, thank you for giving us the opportunity to present at this uh, excellent conference.